I built the perfect smart home theater for my house, and it has some awesome automations. I'm gonna show you my setup, all of the automations I'm using to power it, and stay to the end because I'll show you how we fit a home office, YouTube studio, gym, and theater in just 237 square feet. Welcome back to Future Smart Home. My name is Ben, and this channel is all about simplifying your life with smart home technology. I've had TVs for years, but I've never turned the room where we watch TV into a theater. We have younger kids, so at the end of the day, my wife and I are usually exhausted, and the house can be chaotic. So we wanted a space that we controlled and the kids couldn't destroy. We love watching TV shows and movies together, so we wanted this to be a relaxing space, but it needed to also function as a home office, YouTube studio, theater, and gym. There's a lot going on in here, but let's start with the centerpiece, the TV. This is an LG C2 65 inch 4K OLED TV, and it is amazing. It's seriously the best TV I've ever owned in my life and probably the best TV I've ever watched. The picture quality is amazing, and if you can put an OLED TV in a low light environment, like here in our basement, it is just so good. It's also great for gaming, which I'll talk about in a minute. Because this is a multifunctional space, I knew that when we mounted this TV, it needed to be on a really cool and functional mount and this one is no exception. This is the Sanus VLF 728B2. Again, I'll link everything I talk about today in the description, so don't worry about writing this down. It's a super slim mount that you don't really notice until you're on the side of the TV, which, by the way, this is the thinnest TV I've ever seen in my life. The articulation allows us to use it when we're using our water rower or if we just wanna watch a show while we're on the Peloton. For sound, we went with a Sonos wireless system. This is a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos system with a Sonos Arc soundbar paired with two Sonos One speakers for rear sound, as well as a Sonos mini sub to round everything out. One of the specific draws for me is this system was designed to support Dolby Atmos, which if you aren't familiar, includes the support for sounds coming from all around you, even above. This Sonos soundbar does this with a pair of up-firing speakers that bounce sound off the ceiling and into your ear. And if you're wondering, is all of this worth it? It totally is. It's so good that my wife and I are sometimes down here watching a show and we'll think that we hear something outside of our house or above us when in fact it's just the content that we're watching. Speaking of content, I have an Apple TV 4K mounted behind the TV and a PlayStation 5 below for when I'm gaming. Now this particular TV has support for the latest HDMI standards, which means low latency and a really high refresh rate, which is great for gaming. We also have a Synology NAS in our network closet that has a Plex server. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention the brains of our smart home and more than 16 ethernet runs are also in this room. More on that in a minute. The last piece of any theater setup is lighting. There are six down lights I installed in this room and there are three zones that I can control. That allows me to customize the lighting in some really fun ways. Behind the TV is a really simple Wix lighting strip. If you don't have one of these for your TV, they are really inexpensive, but super nice. It adds a really calming visual effect around the TV, helps with eye strain, and it's really easy to install as long as you have an extra plug for power. You could just tape these LED strips to the back of your TV. This room is also a home office and YouTube studio. We have a standing desk right here in the corner of the room. This is where I work and film my YouTube videos. There's a ton of cool automations here. I even have a folding treadmill that I use, which is really amazing. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see a video on this desk or smart desk automations in general. So let's talk about automations. When we come into this room, I really didn't wanna to have to think about the lighting. So that required a few things, awareness of what was happening with the TV, presence detection, and some fun lighting effects. First, when we come down the stairs and it's dark, the lights will turn on to a low level. I have a contact sensor on the door and the Nest Protect is a nice motion sensor right at the bottom of the stairs. When we installed overhead lights, I made sure that each of the three areas were lit independently and controlled by separate switches. This allows us to raise or lower the lights in different parts of the room and to provide some separation and to cut down on the glare of the TV. If we turn on the Apple TV, the TV backlighting automatically comes on. And if we press play, the lights will dim. Press pause and the lights will come back up so that you can move around the room. 
It's the simplest of automations, but it just feels so natural and so nice. And I can't tell you the number of times guests have commented on it. If I'm down here playing a video game with the PlayStation 5, there's a specific gaming scene that will come on. I like to tell myself it gets me psyched up to play my best, but it's just cool and I'm a nerd. Because we're using an Apple TV, there are some really great home automations that come right out of the box. If someone rings our doorbell, we'll get a video preview of the doorbell camera right on our TV. Now, normally this would have to be a HomeKit compatible camera, but we have Nest doorbells. Thanks to our Starling Home Hub, we're able to publish these cameras as HomeKit cameras so that they work in the Home app. I'll leave a link to this device in the description below. It is awesome. If you have Nest products, you've got to check it out. And of course, at any point, we can pull up all of the cameras around our home right from the comfort of our couch. Since this is a basement, we do have a lot of equipment running, which can get really loud. Because this is all hooked into Home Assistant, anytime we start watching content on our TV or I get on a Zoom call for work, the dehumidifier, which is the loudest, automatically shuts off and it'll only turn back on if the occupancy of the room has changed for a certain amount of time. Again, we also use this room as a home gym, so Home Assistant knows if our Apple TV is screen mirroring or displaying Apple Fitness, and it won't trigger the lights to dim. When we leave, we just walk out of the room. Our EP1 millimeter wave presence detector knows when we are gone with an amazing degree of accuracy, and everything just shuts off. And when all of this comes together, then we can just walk in, work out, or watch a show and everything just works, it is amazing. All right, so let's jump into Home Assistant for a minute and I'll show you how some of these automations work behind the scenes. So here we are in Home Assistant and I wanna show you exactly how this Apple TV automation works. This is our basement theater Apple TV. And what's really great about this is the statuses that you get from Home Assistant. So as you can see over here on the right, you can see that it went from playing to idle to standby, all sorts of different states. They're all reported to Home Assistant and it's all instantaneous because my Apple TV is connected over ethernet. So there's a couple of automations to walk you through. The first one is really the main one, which is if the Apple TV turns on a movie and starts playing, then we're gonna dim the lights. So I'll show you how that works. So this is the trigger. The device is the Apple TV. Apple TV starts playing, that triggers the automation. This template is actually something I used after a lot of trial and error because what I was finding is that when I was browsing Netflix, it would start to autoplay some of the titles as I was scrolling through the list. And the lights were turning on and turning off and turning on and turning off. It was really, really quite annoying. So this template actually looks at the state of the media device, which is this media player Apple TV, and it looks to see what is the specific media duration of the actual content that is playing. And so this is just a simple calculation to make sure that it is longer than 600 seconds, which would be 10 minutes. So I'm just looking for content that is longer than 10 minutes and that seems to be a sufficient enough check to make sure that it's not just turning on, turning off. So it does have to be a little bit of a longer form piece of content. If you're watching shorter things like YouTube videos, you might wanna set that to three minutes or five minutes, something like that. The second condition that I like to check is to make sure that when we're using the Apple TV for Apple Fitness, the movie scene doesn't trigger. So if we're on the rowing machine or the Peloton or doing a workout in front of the TV, what we can do is we can actually look and see what is the app ID that is currently at the forefront of the Apple TV. And again, this is why this Apple TV integration is so great because I can explicitly say, I don't want any content that is playing to be from Apple Fitness and trigger this automation. So that's how this one works. Another entity that I use that I find to be really helpful is I set up this helper called Basement Maintain Lights. And really all this is, is just a toggle that resets at the end of the day, but it's something that I can toggle in my dashboard to make sure that the lights aren't going to be affected by any of these Apple TV automations. Because sometimes we do want the lights to stay on 
If we are watching something, maybe while working, we don't want the lights to go into theater mode. And so this entity, Basement Maintain Lights, if I switch it on, then it blocks all of these automations. And you'll see this in a few cases, but this just confirms that Basement Maintain Lights is off. If it is, it continues. And then the last check that we do is just to make sure we're not in sleep mode. So that's good night mode. And that's just to make sure that the Apple TV isn't turning on in the middle of the night or lights are turning on and off. I did have an issue with that at one point, but it went away after some troubleshooting, but I just kept this, this state check in here. And if that happens, then we activate our scene, which is the movie night scene, and that sets the lights to an appropriate level, turns on the backlight around the TV. So that's automation number one. Then when you press pause, you wanna bring up the lights. So this is the Apple TV paused automation, and there are two triggers here. The first is if we actually get a signal to say that the Apple TV was paused, and then the second is sometimes the device does go into an idle state when it is paused. I've found this a few times. And we look to see, did this go from playing to idle, which is another indicator that uh, pause was pressed. Now, for both of these, I actually have a duration of two seconds because sometimes the states can flip on and flip off really quickly. But if you set it for two seconds, it sort of ensures that Yes, you did uh, intend to pause. And that's also if you're pressing a you know, pause and uh, play and pause and play really quickly, you might be fast forwarding or something like that and you don't wanna necessarily have the lights go on and off and on and off. So it's a little bit of a delay, which I found to be actually really quite helpful. So those are the triggers. And for our conditions, again, we look for the app to make sure this isn't the Apple Fitness app. So that's that check. We do the same check here to look at the basement maintain lights entity. And then we also look for, uh, make sure it's not uh, in the middle of the night. And if all those things pass, then we turn on our pause scene and pause brings up the lights to a nice level and makes it easy for us to move around the, the room. So that's automation number two. And then the last one is just another edge case or just another case to be aware of. You could just, press off on the Apple TV. Instead of pausing it, you just turn it off. And that is what this trigger is. So if the lights do turn off, then we'll do the same thing, turn on the pause scene. So it just, if you didn't actually pause and you just jumped to turning off the Apple TV and you're heading up for the end of, at the end of the night, the lights will turn on as well. One other automation that you'll see mentioned here in the Apple TV related automation section is this dehumidifier turn on. I did want to mention this. When the Apple TV turns on movie mode, part of this scene, this movie night scene, is that the dehumidifier, which is right next door and is really loud, that is automatically turned off as a part of that scene. So anytime that scene is active, the dehumidifier is off. Now, this dehumidifier turn on automation is actually a really fun one because it's just sitting and checking every five minutes to see, hey, should I turn back on? And I created this because I was turning off the dehumidifier when we were watching movies and then I'd forget to turn it back on and it's important to, to keep it on during the summers here. So this does one simple check here which is why the Apple TV was showing up. It just confirms that the Apple TV is not playing for five seconds. So if it is playing for five seconds, then this automation isn't gonna run. So if there's an active movie or something that we're watching on the TV, it's not going to turn on uh, the dehumidifier. So that's really what this automation is. If you'd like to hear more about this kind of automation that I have with the dehumidifier and turning on and off and a walkthrough, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to talk through it in a future video, but it's a really fun one. But specifically for the purposes of the theater, I wanted to make sure that there were no additional sounds. Everything is perfect and ready for showtime. Hopefully this video gave you some inspiration for what you can do with a smart theater room and how you don't necessarily need a whole lot of space to make it happen. I did mention that our, the brains of our smart home and 16 different ethernet runs are also in this room. For that, you're gonna have to look under the stairs.
No, seriously, go check out my other video about the network closet under the stairs. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the future. Thank you.